Today on our 2005 Volvo XC90, we're going to install the Takancha Prodigy P2 brake controller part number 90885. Now because this vehicle is not equipped with the manufacturer's 7 pole wiring, we're going to need the e-trailer ETB C7 brake controller install kit. Let's go ahead and check our brake controller. Here we can see we have the two lights indicating we have power. On the driver's side of the brake controller is the thumb wheel adjustment for adding or reducing power going to the trailer braking. On the passenger side is the push button for changing the boost modes for the aggressiveness of power going to our trailer braking. Next, I'll go ahead and connect my trailer. Then on the LED display, we'll show a C showing trailer connection. Then as we press on the vehicle's brake pedal, the numbers will go up as necessary. Since we're not moving, we don't need any power going to our trailer braking. If in an emergency situation, we need to slow down our trailer without using the vehicle brake pedal, we can use the manual sweep at the bottom to send power to the trailer braking only. Now, once we unhook our trailer electrical from the vehicle, you'll see the LED flash an NC, which stands for no connection. So to begin our install, we'll go ahead and open up the hatch and lower the tailgate. We're then gonna go ahead and pull the cargo liner out of the way, set it aside, open up the rear cargo compartment, unlatch it so that we can remove it. Here we see the four pole harness is stored. Under the metal bracket and plastic housing will be our battery. We're gonna go ahead and remove the bracket and plastic housing now. Set those aside for installation later. Now that we've uncovered the battery, on the passenger side of the battery is the manufacturer's grommet. We're going to take our four pole harness, run it behind the battery, and over to the grommet. We're going to go ahead and pull the grommet out. Once we have access to the grommet, I'm going to use my pair of side cutters and we're going to cut a slice in the grommet large enough that we can fit our four pole harness through. Now I'm going to go ahead and pass the four pole through the hole. And then we'll slide the four pole harness into the grommet. And then we can reinstall the grommet. Now here we have our four pole run underneath the vehicle. As you can see, it just simply comes out of the grommet. Next, we need to mount our seven pole bracket onto the seven pole. And then the entire seven pole and bracket to the hitch. Starting with the mounting of our seven pole bracket, we'll simply just slide it on and then use the bolts and nuts provided with the install kit to secure the two together. And once we got all our hardware installed, we'll just go ahead and tighten it down. Uh, here coming off the hitch is a bracket. We can secure our seven bolt bracket too. Take our bolts and drop them down through the bracket. Line them up and install the hardware underneath. Once I'm installed, I'll go ahead and tighten them down. Now 
Now to clean up my install look a little bit, secure and bundle our wires together, I'm going to put some electrical tape around the bundle up until the four pole plug. Now with my wires wrapped up, we're going to go ahead and take a pair of side cutters and cut off the purple wire. This is used for reverse lead going to the trailer. However, this application doesn't have trailer reverse lights on the trailer, so we're just going to cut it off. Next, we're going to apply some dielectric grease to our four pole connector. We're going to be using the Edelman dielectric grease part number 11755. Then we'll take the four pole flat connector that was already installed on the vehicle, move the cap, plug into the new harness. With the two plugged together, I'm going to go ahead and remove the cap off the old four pole harness. Eventually, we're going to wrap up that connection point with some black electrical tape. Now, we've got the black wire, which will provide a 12 volt hot lead to our seven pole connector, and the blue wire which will provide our power going to our trailer braking. So we're gonna take our gray duplex cable, run it from inside out, down through the grommet, same one we used for our four flat wiring. Now we need to expose the two wires under our gray duplex cable, so I'm just gonna use my utility knife, carefully cut the sheathing, cut off the excess, then we'll strip back the two wires. Here we're going to go ahead and match the black to black for our 12 volt hot power lead. And we'll use the white wire to connect with the blue wire. And this will provide the power running from our brake controller to our seven pole connector and ultimately to the trailer braking. Now with all of my connections made back here, I'm going to continue wrapping up my wires with some black electrical tape, covering up our connection points, help keep them free from dirt, dust, debris, and moisture. It also cleans up our install looks and helps us bundle the wires together. Now once I have the wires wrapped up, I'm just going to use some zip ties to secure the wiring to the top of the hitch. Next I'll take the white wire here with the pre-attached ring terminal. We're going to take it over and secure it. To the bottom of the frame. We can use a self-tapping screw to secure our ground. Now with my wiring routed and secured underneath here, we're going to go ahead and cut off the excess from the zip ties. Now that we have our gray duplex cable run inside, we're going to mount the breakers in the lower storage compartment on the driver's side of the battery. So we'll need to Peel back the sheathing of our gray duplex cable and cut the black wire that's going to go to the breaker for the 12 volt hot supply that runs to the 7 pole. Using my utility knife, I'm going to give myself plenty of working room. Be real careful when removing the sheathing. Now let's go ahead and mount the breaker so we know exactly where we're routing to. We're going to have a 20 amp breaker that's ultimately going to supply power to our brake controller and a 40 amp breaker that'll provide power to the 12 volt supply at our seven way trailer connector. I'm gonna go ahead and mount my 40 amp first. Note the silver side goes towards the seven pole and the copper side will go towards the positive battery post. Now a special note when installing your breakers, we're just using some small self tapping screws. It'll be very difficult to do it along the back side here. This is the hardened steel area. We're just going to take our simple self-tapping sheet metal screw and go into the side of the battery junction box plate. Steel plate. The steel overlaps the junction box by several inches. We can put one on either side of the plate. Now I have both breakers mounted, go ahead and run my wiring, check my length, cut the wire, strip back both sides, and add small ring terminal.
Our ring terminals can then be attached to the silver side of our breaker. Now we have our ring terminals on, we'll go ahead and secure them with the star washer and duct provider. I'm just going to tighten them down finger tight this time. Now, for the two copper sides of our breaker, we'll eventually go back and make leads. It'll go from the copper side to our positive battery terminal. But we don't want to hook up our power just yet. We need to finish running the gray duplex cable. The gray duplex cable is going to get run inside the vehicle underneath the trim paneling, ultimately up behind the dashboard on the driver's side where we can make connection with the brake controller pigtail. Now to assist in routing my wiring behind the paneling, I'm going to use a full wire, which could be a sit piece of wire. In this case, we're using a piece of air tube. I'm going to go ahead and remove the thresholds here. Now once we get our pull wire in place, we'll go ahead and take the gray duplex cable, route over to the pull wire, and attach the two together. I'm just going to use some black electrical tape. We'll then use the pull wire to pull the gray duplex cable behind the paneling. There are multiple ways to route your gray duplex cable. We're going to take this one through the inside. You could also run it underneath towards the engine compartment, and then up through the firewall underneath the dash. Regardless of whichever way I route it, when we route it, we'll stay away from any moving components such as a steering or suspension or excessive heat such as exhaust. Yeah, I'm just gonna use my pull wire to assist in running underneath the thresholds here. Now with our gray duplex cable, run underneath the paneling here, out the carpet, underneath the dash. We're gonna go ahead and let that set aside for now. Next, we're gonna mount our brake controller pocket. The pocket will sit here on the dash where it's accessible to the driver. Using the hardware provided, we'll go ahead and secure the pocket to the dash. Next, we'll take the pigtail from our brake controller and we'll start wiring up the four connection points. First one we're going to wire up is for the brake switch. This will tell the brake controller only when the brake pedal is depressed. Underneath there's a cover panel. We're going to go ahead and remove that panel first. Pull it out and set it aside for reinstallation later. Here, directly above the brake pedal, there's a blue connector. This connector is the wiring that goes into the back of the brake switch. Using a test light, we can back probe the connector and identify which one is hot when the brake pedal is depressed. As I press on the brake pedal, my test light lights up, and we can see it's the yellow wire with a red stripe. So to attach the red wire with the manufacturer's wire, we're gonna use the quick splice connector. The quick splice connector will slide over the manufacturer's wire. Then we can take the red wire, slide it into the quick splice connector, and crimp it down. It's crimped down, we'll close the clasp. Now with my brake switch wire connected, we're gonna go ahead and switch back to the gray duplex cable where we can connect the power for the brake controller and the power for our brakes that's sent to the seven-way connector at the back of the vehicle. We'll go ahead and cut off our excess length, strip it back, and then expose the wiring. Using the buck connector, Provided with the brake controller, go ahead and secure it here to my power wire first. Now, just like before, we'll match color for color for the 12 volt supplies, black to black. We connected the blue wire from the pigtail with the white wire from the gray duplex cable, essentially matching up the two blues. Now we've got three of our four connections made here for the four pole that goes into the back of our brake controller. The fourth one will be the brake controller ground. For that, we're going to go ahead and strip back both ends 
Then use the blue butt connector provided with the brake controller to secure an extra length of white wire that will ultimately get run over to the body where we can use a self-tapping screw to ground it to the vehicle's sheet metal. Now the white wire you can use would be the leftover inside the gray duplex cable or if you have a smaller piece available you could use that also. Now with the butt connector connections made and all of my connections made to the four pole plug for the brake controller, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up with some black electrical tape. This will help to bundle up our wires, clean up our install, and wrap up our connection points to keep them clean from dirt, dust, debris, and moisture. Now once we have our wires taped up, we'll go ahead and take the white wire, and we'll run it back to the, towards the firewall and over towards the emergency brake pedal. Once I get it routed here, just in front of it, I have my length. I'll go ahead and cut off the excess, strip back at a ring terminal, and use my self-tapping screw to secure it to the sheet metal. Now with our ground secured, I'm gonna take the four pole, run it up through the brake controller pocket, bring in the brake controller, plug it in, Go ahead and set it into the pocket and lock it into place. Now we need to secure our excess wiring here up underneath the dash. Make sure we stay away from the steering shaft and the gas and brake pedal. We're going to move back to the rear of the vehicle where we'll make our jumpers to go from the copper side of our breakers to the positive battery post. Now, just using the leftover duplex cable, we've gone ahead and pulled the black wire out of it. I'm gonna strip back two ends. These two ends will get small ring terminals. Next, I can take these two ends, put them onto the copper side of each breaker. like we did earlier. We're gonna go ahead and install the star washer nut to secure each and tighten all four down. Now with both breakers wired, we'll take the remaining portion of our power wire, run it to the positive battery post stud where we can remove the nut, install the ring terminal, and then re-secure this nut. I'll mark my length, strip it back, and add the larger ring terminal with our ETBC7 kit. Then I'll go ahead and secure my wires with a zip tie. Cut off the excess of any of the zip ties to clean up the install look. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our battery box cover and bracket.
And there you have it. We've gone over the operation and install of our Takancha Progy P2 brake controller, part number 90885 on our 2005 Volvo XC90.